In this video, I'm showing you step-by-step -step on how to turn acoustic drum shells into electronic. No BS, all the steps, all the hurdles you're gonna encounter, that's coming up. What's up, Justin here. Welcome to 65 Drums, the place to keep on top of all things eDrum related. Hope you guys are all having an awesome day. I wanted to make this step-by-step -step video because a lot of people are getting into this. They wanna turn their acoustic drum set into electronic. Some people are going on Craigslist and buying a cheap set of $200 drums and they wanna turn that into electronic. Some people have their beloved acoustic drum set that's really, really nice, but they just don't live in the part of town where houses are freaking five miles apart, so they can't use their acoustic drum set where they live anymore and they wanna turn it into electronic. That's what this video is all about. I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to do that. Before I do though, I wanna mention there's a much easier way to do this. You could just buy an all-in-one solution. Uh, ATV just came out with a very nice option, their A-Drums line. I recommend that if you're in like the $3,500 price range. Uh, if you want something really cheap, like Pintech has an option there, I think just under $2,000. If you want something really, really, really high-end, you got Drum Tech, where they have drum sets that are literally just as expensive as a Roland TD50KV, no lie, it's, it's bananas. But they're really, really nice drum sets. And then um, Joe Becky's kind of like underneath. So there are options if you don't want to do any of this work yourself, because this is a time suck. Just wanted to give you a warning. It's a little bit frustrating. It's not hard. It's just that it takes time and it's slightly frustrating. But if you do want to do it all yourself, this is the video to watch because right now, step by step, I'm going to show you how to do it. Step number one, you got to decide whether or not you want to use mesh drum heads or rubber pads that you put on top of your drum shells. Literally, these are two different categories. For example, you could buy the Pearl option. It comes with the module, the cymbals, and the pads. You lay it all on there and you're good to go. It's really nice and easy and simple. The problem is those cymbals aren't that great. The drum module is kind of outdated and the pads aren't incredibly fun to play on. I recommend the Enfused version over that. It's the all-in-one solution again. It's got nice cymbals, better than the Pearl option. It's got a better drum module, it's more advanced. And again, the playing surface just isn't that fun to play on. Now the great thing about the Enfused option is that it's really quick and easy to do. Like you can throw these on your shells really fast. You don't have to take any drum heads off or anything like that. So you can go from playing all day, throw these on, and then play into the night if you want to be quiet, and then in the morning, rip them off and play it as an acoustic drum set again. Um, another option is from Aquarian. This isn't an all-in-one solution. It doesn't come with the module or the cymbals. These are one-zone pads you can put on your acoustic drums. That puts it in a really awkward spot. It feels great to play on. The surface is similar to Yamaha's DTX pads. A lot more fun to play than the Enfused option, more fun to play than the Pearl option. But again, it's one zone, doesn't come with any other components, so I don't really recommend this unless you're just using one of the pads for a tom or a kick drum or something. All right, so that's the, the rubber pad option. It's, in my mind, it's kind of like a temporary solution where you play it for like a year and then move on to other things. For me, if you're gonna play for two to five years or something, if you're gonna play long-term, you need something that inspires you, that keeps you coming back, and mesh drum heads are just a better option than rubber pads, in my opinion. So step number one is deciding between mesh and rubber. Step number two is you gotta decide what kind of mesh drum head you're gonna buy. So fortunately or unfortunately, however you wanna look at it, there's a lot of options out there, and it gets a little bit confusing. So for example, ZED has a two-ply and a three-ply version. Joe Becky has this thinner three-ply, and then they just came out with a new version I haven't tested yet. Um, you got Remo Silent Strokes. You got Drum Tech. They have a whole line of mesh drum heads. Um, Pearl has their muffle heads. There's a lot of different mesh drum heads out there. I just bought a Pearl, or a Prism, sorry, a Prism mesh drum head probably a month ago. I've been using it. Not a big fan of it for the same reason. I'm not a big fan of these... Uh, uh, ZED mesh drum heads. They don't sit on the drum shell quite like I want them to. They definitely work. Uh, the Prism ones and the ZED ones, I put them sort of in the same category. Really fun to play. They definitely do the job, but they're not that great. They're not like high-end mesh drum heads. A lot of drummers, they instantly go and buy these Remo Silent Strokes, and I don't blame you because these are so cheap. And the weird thing about these Remo Silent Strokes is everyone knows about these. Guitarists know about Remo Silent Strokes and they don't even play drums because they're just really, really famous. Uh, the problem is they're kind of bouncy. It's, since there's only one layer, they, they sort of like vibrate a lot and that gives double triggering issues to drum triggers. It's not something that can't be overcome with module editing and everything, but uh, I don't really recommend the Remo Silent Strokes unless you're on a tight budget. My recommendations for mesh drum heads are Joe Becky drum heads. Uh, I hear Drum Tech makes incredible drum heads, especially their real feel line. Uh, I do like uh, Billy Blast. 
uh, the only problem with Billy Blast is that they're prone to uh, snagging. Like I've got one as a resonant head on my, on my high tom right there. They're really nice, but they're prone to snagging. So yeah, Drum Tech, uh, Billy Blast, and Joe Becky. Those are the ones that I would look into. Roland has a whole line of them that are great. They're the exact same mesh heads that they have in these pads right here. The only problem is they're incredibly expensive because Roland. So those are the brands I would look into. And uh, yeah, you gotta decide what kind of mesh drum head you're gonna buy. Go buy it in a pack because you'll save money if you buy all the drum heads together as one package. The next step is you gotta buy a drum trigger. Drum triggers come in two configurations. You got ones that are on top of your mesh drum heads. So they would look something like this. And then the other option are internal triggers. They go under your drum head like this. Now let's break this down. The, the external ones, they're really cheap. Like this one right here, this is like 15 bucks. This is a D-Drum Red Shot. It definitely does the trick. Uh, this is single zone, so you wouldn't want to use this for your snare because you'd get no rim shot sound. Uh, this is a dual zone. This is about 90 bucks, the Roland RT30. Uh, the RT10s are just as good. I did a comparison video. If you want to see that, I'll link it down in the description below. Um, you can buy a used RT10 snare drum trigger for like $30. So they're not that expensive. If, if you buy the external ones, they're pretty cheap. And everyone knows about them, just like they know about the Remo Silent Strokes. Everyone knows about these because famous drummers use them with their acoustic drums. Um, they use it to layer sound. So they got an EDM snare, and then they're uh, layering that sound on top of their acoustic snare sound that they've got mic'd. My issue with these external triggers isn't that they don't work. Obviously they work, professionals are using them but professionals are using them usually with acoustic drums. If you wanna just use purely electronic and you're getting all your dynamics and all that information in your ears just from these triggers, it's not as good as having an internal trigger. So I recommend internal triggers if you can, if you got the budget for it. You can buy cheaper internal triggers for about $30 a piece and it goes all the way up to like two or $300 if you buy an R drums trigger. Those are incredibly expensive, although they are incredibly awesome as well. So the way internal triggers break down are you got the center mounted ones that are on a bar like this, so right underneath your drum head, and then you've got internal side mounted triggers. It sort of slides onto your lug. By the way, the internal ones, you don't drill your drums or anything like that, nothing like that. You just loosen a couple of screws and slide it in, and then tighten up the screws that go to your lugs. Internal ones, they give you better dynamics. If you wanna make your life really simple, forget the internal center mounted ones. The problem is, you're hitting at the center of your drum every single time, and that's where the trigger is. So there will be a triggering spike, so it'll be overly loud, versus when you hit near the edge, it'll be overly quiet. And you can fix this if you buy really thick drum heads and uh, you tune them really high, you can fix it mostly. But if you wanna have a no frills, like really easy setup, I recommend internal side mounted triggers. There are a lot of options out there. I made a dedicated video where I explained all these options. I'll link in the description below called How to Turn a Snare Electronic. Trigra makes some extreme drums, makes some. I have ones from Joe Becky they gave me as review units. Um, there are a bunch of different brands out there. Mostly, they're gonna be around 30 to $50. So yeah, that's how much those triggers cost. And again, if you wanna go all out and buy like an R drums trigger or something like that, they're, they're ranging all the way up in like the $200 range. And I just wanna make it clear, I'm not against center mounted triggers, I like these, but if you don't wanna spend a lot of time to eliminate hot spotting or at least get rid of most of it, then this could be a time suck that you might not wanna deal with. A lot of people, they just wanna have the side mounted triggers and I'm sort of leaning more and more towards that camp because it's just so much easier than having to deal with this. All right, so let's move on to the next step. You gotta buy a drum module. The reason why I'm talking about drum modules before I talk about cymbals is because there's compatibility that is tied between those. So as far as drum modules go, the options are getting better and better. Drum modules all sucked just not that very long ago. But now you've got cheaper options. Well, you can buy this Cap Percussion KT4 drum module. This thing is like 500 bucks. You could buy it used for less than that. This thing sounds the best for the price range. Uh, if you wanna go a little bit higher, uh, T25 drum modules, they're brand new for uh, $1,000. They're used for like $800 or something like that. They sound very, very good in my opinion. Two Box is coming out with their Drum It 3 drum module, which I believe will be in the six to $800 range that will be compatible with like everything. And that's really important because the module that you buy determines what kind of symbols you can buy later on. So keep that in mind. If you wanna go really, really high end, 
Uh, Roland TD30s are selling used for 1,500 bucks right now. I have one and I love it. Using the right compression and EQ, those sounds are actually really good. If you wanna go all the way and go bananas, uh, the Pearl Mimic is the best drum module as far as sounds go. The TD50 is also a contender up there. A lot of professionals are using Roland TD50s right now. So yeah, if you wanna go bananas, that's like $2,000 plus. $500 on the low end. You can go really, really cheap and buy like interfaces that tie directly into your laptop, bypassing any sounds on here. And you can just use drum software. Um, there's an Alesis option. There's a D-Drum option if you wanna go like that. Uh, Mega Drum has a lot of inputs on it. As far as drum modules go, you have a lot of options, but as a general overall rule, brands I would look at buying are Roland's, and cap percussion. I should probably also mention that Yamaha makes really good drum modules and they're at pretty low prices right now so they're definitely worth a look too. Okay, so you've got your drum heads, you bought your drum triggers, you bought a drum module, now let's move on to cymbals. This is something that's important because you gotta buy cymbals that work with your drum module. For example, I can't use all Roland cymbals with this drum module because the ride cymbal only takes one input. I made a dedicated video on eDrum compatibility, what modules work with what pads. I'll link that down in the description below if you wanna go check that out. I'm linking a lot of different videos down there, so check it out. But if you wanna know like the compatibility for this, Simmons, Cap Percussion, and Alesis all work because the same company made all those cymbals. It's Medelli. So that those are the symbols that work with this. Roland crash symbols will work with this. The real issue is you're not gonna get Roland ride symbols to work with these uh, cap percussion modules because they only give you one input to plug into the ride with one of these or most Alesis modules are the same way. Roland ride symbols take two inputs, one for bow and edge and the other input is for bow and bell area. So that's the distinction there. If you bought a Yamaha module, you're tied down. You gotta go buy Yamaha symbols. Yamaha cymbals are very, very nice, so you're not really missing out on anything. But just wanna let you know, Yamaha is kind of in their own little island. If you buy one Yamaha product, most of the time, you gotta use it with another Yamaha product. They kind of intertwine together, kind of like Apple. If you wanna know the best cymbals out there, it's probably Roland and ATV. ATV is brand new, they're meant to work with Roland modules, and I believe they work with the Lisus modules as well. Very nice cymbals, and uh, Roland and ATV are the top ones if you're looking for the best cymbals out there. But what about metal cymbals? They're getting more popular recently because they look awesome. They're not that expensive really compared to rubber cymbals. Sometimes they're around the same price, sometimes they're cheaper. The options that you have are the Smart Trigger options. Smart Trigger made the Elisa Surge cymbals, the Pearl E Classic cymbals, and their own branded line of cymbals. Those are all in one bubble right there. They work. Um, they're not amazing, but they work. Um, you got options from custom builders that will take like Sabian or you know, whatever symbols and make them electronic and sell it to you over their website. I can't remember the name of this company, but I'll link it. Uh, I'll put a picture on the screen somewhere. You also have Field. They're a high-end option. They're very, very expensive, but they work as well. Uh, Joe Becky has a whole line of symbols uh, that they have. They're electronic. So there are metal symbol options out there. They are a little bit louder than rubber symbols. Not like twice as loud as rubber symbols or anything like that. Just a, they are a little bit louder. They've got this coating underneath them or like an acrylic layer that dampens the sound. But uh, if noise is an issue for you, you'd probably better stick with rubber cymbals. But if your household can take a little bit extra volume, then go with the metal ones maybe if that's something you're into because they do look pretty sweet. So yeah, those companies are an option, but for people that just want a little bit less volume, rubber is still the way to go in my opinion. The next step is you need to buy some cables. I'll link the ones I bought down in the description below. If you have a drum module like a, like a KT4 or a TD25 where they have a cable snake, it's not an issue. But if you have something like a TD30, a two box or something that doesn't have a cable snake, like me, like I have to have individual cables, I had to go buy a bunch of cables from Amazon. They're great because they're long enough to reach the drum module. Also, they're straight on one end and L-shaped on the other end. The reason why you wanna have at least one end of the cable that's L-shaped is it can't really plug into the symbol very easily if it's a straight cable. So if you wanna go check out those cables, I've linked it in the description below. All right, so let's move on to the last thing. You're gonna to have to install these and then set up your trigger options. Now, installing is very, very easy. This is how you do it. I'll just film myself doing it. All you gotta do is undo one of the screws inside of your drum and then slide the trigger on and then screw it back on. Now you wanna have about like two to three millimeters of clearance over the top of the edge of your drum shell and then put your mesh head on. I do not recommend putting on uh, the, the resonant head before you've really fine tuned everything because you're gonna be moving this thing slightly up and slightly down just to make sure you're getting the best trigger results. So make sure you're getting enough contact don't like completely squish it against the mesh drum head, but make sure it's getting a firm amount of contact. 
and then go into your drum module. You're gonna have to mess with some trigger settings. The first one is sensitivity. If you're hitting it really, really lightly and that everything's spiking, then you're gonna wanna turn down the sensitivity. The next setting to look at is threshold. Threshold is the level at which it starts recognizing that you hit the drum. So if you're tapping it and nothing's happening, you're gonna have to lower the threshold until it acknowledges that you're actually hitting it. But on the other hand, if you're hitting your high tom, for example, and that's shaking your kick drum, your kick drum might accidentally get a trigger because there's a vibration there. So what you'd wanna do is raise your threshold on the, the kick drum trigger just a little bit, so that way it's rejecting all those false triggers. Also, there's a re-trigger cancel option in there that you might wanna mess with if you're hitting the drum once and hearing two triggers. I made a dedicated video on this showing you exactly how to fix all this. I'll link that down in the description below with all the other piles of videos I've mentioned. The next step is you'll want to mount your drum module. There's a million ways to do this. For example, you can just put it on a stool or a djembe. Um, most drum modules have this exact mount right here, Roll-On, Delesis, Cap Percussion, they're all using this exact same mount. This fits on cymbal stands, this fits you know, there's a lot of different ways to mount these. I actually made an entire video on it, but the long and short of it is you can fit this on any standard cymbal stand. It fits right there. Um, I use, what do I use? I use a little mini drum rack behind me right there, a section of a Go E drum, the KE6. You can do that. There's a lot of different options there, but you'll have to mount it somehow. If you wanna put a resonant head on these drums, that's definitely a good idea because sometimes the hardware that's loose right there will sort of rattle around and make this annoying sound. So if you wanna buy a really cheap like Remo Silent Stroke to use as your bottom head, you can do that. As long as you're feeding your cables through one of the air vents, that's fine. Um, another option is just cutting a hole through your acoustic drum head. You know, if you've got a really beat up old drum head, it doesn't really matter if you cut a hole in it. So just the fact that you're holding the hardware on there, it keeps the look good and you're cutting this out so it's not making that annoying racket. Another option is just, just to get some plastic tubing to go around underneath your drum shell. That way you can still put the hardware on there. You're still putting that bottom rim on there. It looks nice from a distance, but you're not actually putting a drum head and that way the, the cable can fall right through it. Another option other than both of those is you can go with, where is it? Ah, here it is. Another option that you got is you can buy like a plug head. So you plug the cable from the trigger into this this is your resonant head, and then you plug your drum module and another cable going like that right there. So those are ways you can deal with having a resonant head if you wanna have one. I should probably mention that if you don't get the trigger settings right, it will throw off the feel of your drum set entirely. So really be patient, take the time to get everything dialed in, and the end result is really fun. So this is my drum set behind me, Sonar Force 2001. Um, the triggers I'm using right now is an R-Drums bar trigger, a review unit that they gave me. I got the Prism drum head on that. Jobeki drum heads and triggers for the toms and the kick drum. I'm using Roland cymbals, a VH11 hi-hat. I've got that drum rack that I'm mounting my Roland TD30 on. The overall result is great. It's not perfect. I'm going to continue you know, swapping things out, upgrading things, but it's really, really fun. It's, it's nice to sit behind a drum set that's full acoustic size, and that's why a lot of drummers are going this route now. Anyway, I hope you guys all have an awesome day, and I'll see you in a few.